Now spawning up in the top right position, we have got the blue Protoss from XMG. He's a fellow caster, he is in the Premier Division of WCS EU. He's a giant, and he's Todd. And his opponent, spawning in the bottom left hand corner as the Red Terran. He might not be such a giant, but he has a chance to try and get himself among the greats today. Will he be able to do it? Guys, let's give a cheer for the underdog. You never know what these players might come up with here, and I'm looking forward to seeing some fantastic play. It is Ducky. Neo Planet S is one of these maps which leads to funky games. It's I'm true, I'm definitely man. thinking funky game. I don't know. I've, I, you know when you just get that spidey sense, caster sense, whatever you want to call it, of something sneaky and a bit crazy could be going on. Yep, it's possible. This game. Uh, I wouldn't bet against it. I mean, we're certainly going to see aggression. Neo Planet S is known for that. Rarely do you sort of get into positions where people are basically just harassing each other for half an hour and it's got absolutely nothing. Uh, but... You know, you're going to see aggression off of two base because it's a little bit difficult to get that third. There are no watchtowers where you can see absolutely everything else as well going on the map. It just lends itself to that kind of play. And we already see the gas coming down for Dougie. This isn't going to be a gasless expand for him in the meantime. Second pilot going up. So no super early shenanigans coming out from Todd here just yet. And the cybernetic squad going down in an interesting place behind the mineral line here. It is an odd place to put it. Now... I want to talk a bit about things that Todd could be looking to go for, and that Dougie could also be looking for. Drops, airplay, are both really strong. Yeah. Specifically drops, actually, for Dougie, potentially. But you can dart him from the third position into main very comfortably, very quickly, with a good getaway path. It can be awkward to try and make it hold. So I'll wait to see what is going to happen there. And, yeah. <sighs> Reapers openings, it's good. It's one of the better maps to go for Reapers on. There's a good amount of cliff area you can utilize, but... Probably not going to be a killing blow. No, definitely not here. The Reaper is going to be popping out as the SV goes towards the low ground. So it's going to be a fairly box standard Reaper expand here to start off with from Dougie. A nice versatile little opening. Notice this Reaper is on move command, by the way. It is on attack move to try and pick off any probes it encounters along the way. Nice little touch. Now, Mothership Cores. We know, of course, in PvP earlier today, the Mothership Cores can be pretty awesome. Whoa, they can make or break things, but it's gonna it's gonna just force back that Reaper to scout out the natural nexus. Todd is going fairly standard, one gate expand, getting his mothership core there, everything a-okay. And I'm so pleased. <laughs> I, 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 we're looking at the game, so we don't actually have time to see too much of what's going on in the chat. I just read someone say, this is the greatest stream ever. <laughs> Immediately followed by someone saying, stop! Which I think is absolutely brilliant. Really Look, goes to show us. So he's making little stars. Look at him. Dougie showing off for the crowd here. And, uh, well, he's basically buying time at the moment. Yeah. Uh, until he goes back in again. He's obviously waiting so that he can go back in and check out what kind of tech. And uh, Todd has chosen the robotics facility on this occasion. And he's hoping to be able to uh, prevent the Reaper from scouting it by having the Mothership Corps go up via this way in case the Reaper is there. However, it is not. It's at the Natural Nexus. And, uh, ooh, is he going to go into the main base and try and scare this? Look at this, the Stalker going up. Todd does not want him to see anything. Todd is, he's in beast mode right now. You can tell he's just like, laser focus. Mm. Not messing around, not taking any risks. This Reaper is not getting in my base and is not going to be killing any of my probes. Simple as that. Well, he's, he hasn't even seen the robotics facility, no. so let alone killing probes, he just hasn't been able to do any scouting. And that really is the primary reason why these Reapers tend to be quite useful going into the mid game. Okay, will he be able to get into the base? Yes, he will. Can he get away from the Mothership Core in the Sentry? Just about. Has he seen the robotics facility? Yes, he has. Okay, good. And he goes into the back and sees the forge and the extra gateway. This is exactly what he wanted. Is he going to escape? Nope, in fact a giant explosion involving a jetpack next to the probes you'd think would do some splash damage to them, but apparently not, because health and safety in the year 2552, someone's going to correct me in the chat on lore in a second, is actually quite good. Yeah, it is, even, even though they give all of their soldiers tons of drugs. It's true, man. Like, Why couldn't combat drugs save them there? Why couldn't they? Someone explain Why that with your logic. Why can't he shoot a gun and take his drugs at the same time? Logic everywhere. But Marines, of course, running over. Yep. Of course, something so tiny could never kill an ultralist. Dude, of course, I just in the feel game like Widow does. Mines, like, walk. So cute. They scuttle. They do. They're like little crabs. Oh, That's like exactly what they're like. I'm really liking them all right now. 
But without, uh, without being too distracted by that, we do actually have a massive attack going on into the Nexus. And immediately putting down the Photon Overcharge. Todd just doesn't want to take any chances right now. I also love the fact that he's got his Observers here. Look at this! Yes, okay, an Observer gets taken out. But you know what? The second Observer saw that this Medivac was going into the main. And Todd's going to be able to do it and stop that Medivac from getting in. This is such a brilliant play here. Widowmine trying its best to sneak in and burrow, unable to do so. And in fact, we even see a Photon Cannon going down behind. So just in case one gets down here from a drop, the Cannon will be able to take it out. Todd, like you said, in a little bit of beast mode right now, nothing is getting past him. It's the goody school of Protoss. And... Um this is just fine for Todd. He's able to go about what he wants to do. He is taking this game to go on his terms, which is actually really not what Dougie's wanting. Dougie's trying to be aggressive, trying to make uh, the decision, and that really might... Ooh! Ooh! I think he specifically clicked a couple of probes. They're getting three of them. Uh, we, we were watching that one probe over here by the middle, thinking, yeah. oh, it's going to get a probe. Fair enough. And then it got three. That is like hitting the jackpot as a Widowmine before you die. That was really, really good. So, uh... Ducky doing a little bit of damage to Todd, but not too much. Todd doing an absolutely splendiferous job of making sure nothing gets past his base defenses. Great usage of observers. Good placement of this photon cannon. Good immediate usage of the photon overcharge. Buying himself as much time as he needs. Didn't want to dictate, uh, be dictated to by Ducky in terms of the pace of the game. Todd just very zen and very on top of everything, I feel. He's prepared for whatever may come at him. And that is fine, because... He's just going to be able to macro up and get himself into a relatively good position. We see a hallucinated phoenix is coming through and he's just going to be like, I've got all of your scouting information. I know what you're doing. I know what you're getting. And I'm going to get more. He's getting straight away down. Well, That's our next storm. Todd does have to be a bit careful though because Dougie's next push has the potential yep. to be an absolute monster of one. Look at this. Stimming combat shield both on the way here inside the main base at those barracks. We have plus one, plus one. Actually, almost complete already. They will finish before Stim does. Um, so, and he's getting those medivacs out right now as well. So potential, I would say, traditional MMM push, because we don't see too many mines over here, might end up being really, really good for Dougie uh, within the next three minutes or so of in-game time. We'll keep a watch on that, as a couple of drops are attempting to make their way into both the main and the natural right now. And, ooh, High Templar is being warped in, but Dougie able to escape the clutches of those evil Protoss spellcasters just in time. Now, Storm is about to finish. This is the point where you get very scared as a Terran player because you're like, well, all of my army can just evaporate. Dougie has to be so careful now because Storms could ruin his day. It is as simple as that, but he does... Storms ruin a lot of days, man. He doesn't nearly have his Ghost Academy done. Nearly. Mm. Well, plus two armor is now done for Todd, which uh, could lend itself perhaps a little bit later on to potential uh, Charge Lot Archon play. He does, of course, already have charge on his own, so that definitely makes sense. So uh, grabbing some of those storms, followed up by some Archon play, would be very, very natural for him. And charge Archon, a really good composition to use against, well, hey, Bio. And we're going to be seeing a lot of that popping into the natural expansion from Dougie in just a moment. The Metavac's being a little bit trigger-happy here. You don't want to be losing a couple of those before the fight begins. But uh, this is a lot of DPS. Will it be countered by Amazing Storms? The storms are going to make or break this. The force fields could be essential. A couple of marines going fast forward. And there's the guardian shield. Charge lots doing some nice oh. damage. Oh, storm miss. Oh, oh, storm hits. He's it's mainly dead. hitting the zealots at the moment, oh, no. actually. But the stims combined with a slight hit from the storms mean that Dougie does actually have to go back and heal at this time. We see, uh, don't know what this guy wants to accomplish there, but disobeying orders from your direct commander ends up like that. And in the meantime, Ooh, he's actually going to be lifting up in a double drop. The rest of the army going to be going up north. This observer will see absolutely everything, but this double drop has yet to be seen, and he might actually get in here and do a bit of damage. It's not just a couple of casual units. This photon cannon will get taken out if the army isn't there, and uh, Todd's currently being distracted by this lump of bio over here. He is a couple of charges going in, and here comes the double drop that you were talking about. The cannon is working its way through. Unfortunately, they stopped targeting the medevac. Back come the High Templar. Back come the Charge Lots. That's the sort of storm that Todd was looking for. That was not pleasant. That was not a, not a good time to be a Terran player. Definitely not. 
and uh, all of a sudden Dougie's, uh, Dougie's force is just looking a lot weaker. He has got a number of Hellbats back home, including the flag bearers of this army, a couple of SCVs with some minerals attached, because hey, why the hell not? Um, so this follow-up push could be good, but here's where I foresee the problem. Number of medevacs on the field, you're looking at it. This is not the number of medevacs you want to support an army that can be healed that's this large. Yes, he has EMPs, and if he gets fantastic EMPs off this army, he could do really well anyway. But that's a big risk to take. He needs to build up those medevacs again, get a minimum of 5 or 7 with this army if he wants to sustain push. That's such a good point. No matter how good that medevac may be, it needs some friends. And it it's is true. getting some, like, this is no lone wolf game. It is all about safety numbers. And especially with the medevac, so... Unless he has a Thor. Unless he has a Thor. <laughs> Thor's... Oh, and Odin. Oh, dude, Odin... I, I, I really want so badly for Odin to be a playable unit in multiplayer. They looked at it for Heart of the Swarm. That would have been amazing. They were gonna do it. I know, it and was so sad. And then they were so just sad. like, no. I was, looking for, I was winning... I was looking forward to winning every game. <laughs> Odin Rush! Standard. That'd be switch. But anyway. Oh, and he passes straight underneath this overseer. No, he's not gonna see it. Yeah, that observer got a great view of everything there. And now <gasps> Hero Marine! Oh. Hero Colossus. Yeah. My Colossus is more hero than you are Marine. Right. Now the number of storms in this army is actually considerable right now. Two more Oh my goodness, those storms actually did a decent amount of damage. There are still a couple of high Templars left here though. Will he be able to get those storms off? Oh, those look at the storms from the high ground! Oh, excellent Boom. storms from the high ground there. That is really what he needed. Where are the ghosts? The ghosts need to do something. Oh, he's going in. Can he snipe these off? Nope. Photon Overcharge says no. Now, he has split Todd two ways. So there's some High Templars kind of warped in here with a lot of energy, which is great. But the bulk of the main army is over here. It's a little bit frustrating to deal with right now. And, oh, nice. Good feedback. And we've got a storm coming down as well. Another feedback on a ghost. And, uh... Dougie isn't actually doing very much with this army right now. He's keeping Todd very, very well split, though, and I really like that. And that might be because there's a couple of Zealots here being very, very annoying back at home. Yeah, just picking off reinforcements as they make their way over. But there is a good storm heading up towards this third, but there's not that many units. Oh, a massive storm! Oh, and, ladies and gentlemen, this is what everything in the red, but... Oh, God, don't stand there! Don't, don't, ah, 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 ah. I mean, that was good. That, that's... Storm. That was... Ow. I was 